Welcome, my name is Dominique Gejeuneau. I work for Oracle Server Technologies. This is the second demonstration of seven demos about in-memory column store new feature introduced in Oracle Database 12102. This one illustrates how in-memory priority can be set on objects to define when column data population should take place in the IAM column store. There are different in-memory priority levels. None value means an on-demand population when the data is queried only. This is the default when no priority is defined on an object. Other values are low, medium, high, and critical. If one of these levels is specified, in-memory objects are populated in priority order at instant startup. The population tasks are queued to SMC or background processes for execution and thus may have to wait for available work processes. This queuing is initiated on the next IMCO cycle. Thus, the population really starts at the next IMCO cycle rather than after instant startup. The IMCO background process queues population tasks for objects with priority other than none only. The queue is drained in priority order from critical to low. Let's connect under the SSB user and set the data population priority in the IM column store for the line order table so that the table gets populated in the IM column store on the next IMCO cycle right after the instance starts up. Different in-memory priorities can also be set on partitions of a partition table. We create a partitioned table with two partitions. The first one with no priority and the second one with a high priority. Insert data in both partitions and verify the priority level set in the data dictionary. We now create a non-partitioned table test with no priority, insert data, and verify the priority level set in the data dictionary. Restart the instance. Right after the instance startup, there are no segments populated in the IM column store. We have to wait until IMCO background process wakes up. IMCO woke up and started to populate the segments with a high priority. The P2 partition of the tab part table is already completely populated into the IM column store because there is only one value for each of the two columns to populate, whereas the line order table is not. It has 17 columns and nearly 700 megabytes to populate. IMCO asked six workers to populate the line order table. Each time you reselect the $V$IM segments, the number of bytes populated in IM column store increases. As long as there is a non-zero value in bytes not populated column, the segment is not fully populated in the IM column store. Now, the segment is fully populated in the IM column store, but the test table is still not populated. Because it has no priority set, we have to select the data to force the population. Whereas you can specify different in-memory compression levels for different subsets of columns in a table, this is not possible to set different in-memory priority levels for different subsets of columns in a table. You can set default in-memory attributes on table spaces storing in-memory segments. The main difference is that you will have to specify default before the in-memory column store clause. 
Note that the default only applies to newly created tables and does not apply to existing tables. Let's take an example. The example table space has no in-memory attributes by default. Two tables are stored in this table space with specific priority attributes. We modify the example table space with a new default in-memory priority attribute. We verify that the existing tables kept their original priority levels. We create a new table with no in-memory priority specific attribute. And you can check that the new table is assigned the default in-memory priority attribute of the example table space. This is the end of the demonstration and thanks for watching.